Welcome to Wolf Tales, where you're going to be hearing stories from our volunteers and staff about their journeys and experiences about how they came to Wolf Connection and the wolves that have impacted their lives. Here with me is pack care member Christopher Espiritu. Chris, just tell everybody out there your journey and how you got to Wolf Connection. So I first heard about Wolf Connection uh, when I was walking through a Barnes and Noble looking for a book to read. And I just so happened to see Teo's book sitting on the, on the shelf there. Um, and what really like caught my attention about the book was the tagline uh, reads, what can wolves teach us about being human? And, you know, me, me being someone that likes to read about nature, read about what it means to be human and reading about like human relationships to nature and to animals, like that's just really caught my eye. And going through the introduction and just hearing or reading about how Teo's, uh, reading about Teo's work with the animals and without at-risk communities, uh, I think that it just really spoke to me. And just after getting to the introduction, I was excited to learn more about wolves and to go see this place. And what caught me by surprise is that it was nearby. It was like, what, 30, 40 minutes from where my parents live here in Santa Clarita. Um, so as soon as I knew that, I knew I had to come and visit. So the reason why it spoke to me so much and why I'm so interested in reading about like, animals and nature um, for the last few years, well, my work has dealt a lot with nature. Um, I work in outdoor education. I work with um, fourth and fifth graders, and I take them out on hikes through the mountains, through the forest, and I teach them about ecosystems. I teach them about how um, the ecosystems on land are related to the ecosystems in the ocean, um, even a little bit about like uh, California history. Um, but it's really about getting getting the, the young students connected with nature and to you know hopefully appreciate it and want to learn more about it and even maybe take care of it. Um, so reading or seeing that book and seeing Teo's work, uh, I guess it just spoke to me because of that's something that I've been doing for my work for the last few years. Um, and that's why I so badly wanted to come and see the wolves for myself and see how the staff um, work with these animals. But then I also felt this call to be involved with it, not just as like a visitor, but also, you know, to volunteer. Um, you know, I had a lot of friends in in my work where, you know, they love taking care of animals too. Um, I even had a friend that, uh, a couple of friends that worked for marine mammal rehab centers. And so they were already working with uh, animals in a conservation setting. Um, and so I was really inspired by them because I, you know, I hear them talk about like the experiences they have with, you know, um, working with seals and sea lions and like getting to work with them closely and feeding them by hand and things like that. And so I already had an idea in my head of what it was like to work closely with an animal and to develop that relationship. And then to see this opportunity come up, I don't know, I think it's just, it just, it just brought, it just wanted me to come here. So the wolf that's had an impact on me since I've been here at Wolf Connection, um, that's kind of tough to think about because there's been several wolves uh, that have had an impact on me. But if I had to pick one, I would say it'd be JC. Um, JC was one of the first wolves that I got to interact with inside his enclosure um, to go inside and, and clean his habitat, you know, scoop his poop, change his waters and things like that. But uh, it was, I guess it was hearing his story um, from my understanding is that he came from uh, an animal shelter in Cass Um And I kind of always thought of him as like a suburban wolf, you know, um, where, you know, he, he was picked up I don't, I don't know if I want to get his story wrong, but he was picked up um, from the suburbs. And that's, that's where I'm from. And like the thing about that is that me being a suburban kid, and I've been around uh, people from all different places, from uh, more urban places, from like downtown. Um, I've, been, uh, I've met people from like rur rural places. I've met people in poverty and met people in very affluent communities. I met, so as a suburban kid though, I always felt like kind of out of place in all these, with all these people. Um, as a suburban kid, I, I kind of felt out of place whenever I would interact with some of these people. Um, I don't know, there's just, I think there's just like a stereotype around suburban kids, like they're just sheltered and uh, kind of in a bubble, which I think I kind of agree and I kind of realized that I was, as I was coming out of college. And since then, and kind of, I've been trying to kind of fight this stereotype and like trying to get as much, I don't know what you call it, life experience as you can, trying to travel um, and just do different experiences. Like I lived in my car for a year and a half, um, just staying um, at different campsites in, in national forests while I was working. So, you know, like I, I tried my hardest to get out of this bubble. And when I look at JC, 
you know, I can see him, like, I look at him, I still see a wolf. You know, I still see him, like, um, you know, just have this, this, uh, this strong wolf energy. And, you know, despite him coming from a place where wolves maybe don't typically come from and still be able to, like, have that, uh, um, have that energy, it's just, you know, it's just, it's inspiring to me. You know, it, may, it keeps on motivating me to, like, uh, you know, not fit into this stereotype and try to, you know, really find who I am and how does my energy impact, you know, the people that I come in, into contact with, wherever they came from and whatever background they have. So yeah, JC's definitely impacted me that way and I thought that was really cool. 